So thank you again for the opportunity to get in front of you and to help you and to you know, be part of this community. This is such an amazing time in history and such an amazing time for Risk Five. And you know, I, I appreciate that every one of us that gets up here is you know, kind of has our hand out and says, hey, can you come help us? I recognize and appreciate that most of the people already helping are, are in this room, so, uh, and perhaps online, tuning in later. So thank you for all you're doing to make Risk Five wildly successful. And in turn, I hope that Risk Five is helping you to become wildly successful as well. All right, so let's get started. When you look throughout history, over the course of time, whether it was the hunter-gatherer stages of life or villages on a prairie somewhere or early industrial revolutions or open source technology. When we face challenges, the best, most long-term durable solutions are when we come together, not when we go off and do things in isolation. We recognize, and I acknowledged yesterday, that almost every talk includes some level of collaboration and we're collaborating with our customers, with our development partners, with our other stakeholders and with each other to build uh, open building blocks. And so uh, congratulations on being part of that awakening in hardware. So it's all about opportunity. Opportunity comes in many sizes and many shapes. Sometimes it's around innovation, sometimes it's around markets, sometimes it's around things that don't yet exist. In fact, we've heard throughout this conference and we've heard you know, in other talks in other corners of the world that there is innovation happening on risk five that was not otherwise possible on any other technical approach. And that is a testament to what we can do here, as well as, you know, kind of opens up the doors of possibilities as we move forward. How many markets have a more than 100% growth rate predicted? I don't know about you, but you rarely get to go do anything for commercial success unless you have both something that's differentiated, the technology, as well as a massive business opportunity. And you know, and you bring along with some of that, some of these lower barriers to entry, open freedom of design, and we'll, we'll get into some of that. But really that potential is skyrocketing. And this, this chart only goes through what, like 2025? Yeah, and uh, already we're seeing predictions of nearly a third of a market in IoT, 10% of automotive, these are figures and numbers previously kind of unheard of. So let's just take one more glimpse in the rear view mirror over the course of uh, you know, the past many decades. There have been about 50 architectures, according to my friend Wikipedia. There have been about 50 architectures. In 2020, let's do some quick Callista math, and I'm going to say that probably more than 95% of all computing was done on two of those architectures. Two stood the test of time, and now, since then, we're getting numbers like this that say risk five is a very formidable option. It is an absolute option as you look at things across the compute spectrum, whether that is the smallest of embedded or the largest in enterprise. And we'll see some of that traction that's already in motion. But, you know, it's already here. We're not just forecasting the future. We're not just predicting, you know, a pie in the sky here. It's already happening. This chart's actually pretty old already. It's like two years old. Already, a, you know, nearly a quarter of designs are incorporating Risk Five in at least one core. You've heard lots of stories already, and you'll hear a few more today about where we see that success, where that traction is already happening in market. But why? Why risk five? Why not one of the other 48 architectures? Unless risk five was one of those. You know, because risk is not completely new news. It was invented back in the 80s and refined, and now we're on version five. No, there won't be a version six, just in case there's any lingering questions on that. Because hardware is something that needs to stand that test of time. 
you need to freeze it. It acts more like a, uh, you know, it, it's a frozen specification, it acts more like a global standard than it does open source software. While we practice many of the uh, collaboration aspects of open source software, at the end of the day, we don't get to issue as many patches. We don't get to change our mind as often as our software friends do. But we need each other. We need frozen hardware uh, specifications, and that's what our group does to bring it to all together. So there are a couple of big reasons, two big reasons, technology and business. On this chart, you'll see a word that appears many times, some version of the word free. Right <laughs> now, obviously, nothing comes for free in this world. It comes through blood, sweat, tears, and you know sometimes cash. Right. So, but for us, there is freedom. There is freedom in the technology, freedom of design to go off and un open doors that had previously been closed. Freedom to take a more modular approach to that development. Many proprietary architectures start with a nice small base of like 1,500 instructions. We have like 47. So it truly means that you can pick and choose exactly what goes into your design rather than uh, be burdened with the entire thing and have to sort through how do I precisely optimize to that design. And then there's the business freedom, the business opportunity of, you know, 100% growth rate here and 80% growth rate over there. You know, we are really putting processors into just about every corner, from autonomous vehicles to autonomous tractors. And you see these types of implementations happening, not just in automotive or in embedded, but in enterprise and HPC. I mean, we've got a whole bunch of people here from Barcelona Supercomputing Center, folks collaborating across different institutions, I gotta say, you know, Europe, Europe, Europe is winning <laughs> when it comes to HPC and RISC-V. And we're really impressed and really proud to be part of that larger community. So technical reasons, business reasons, you can go to the boss and say, you know what, when we try this new thing, when we try this new disruptive differentiation on our data center, in our automobile, let's Let's try it on risk five. Let's see what we can do. Because that argument has already taken hold across many different sectors. I don't have like one of those handy monitors. Well, we have handy monitors here, but they're not seem to be working. So I told you yesterday, for those who tuned in yesterday, for those who didn't, I'll catch you up. Uh, two, four, eight, and 12. So, Last year, we sat around at a lunch table. We hadn't even started drinking yet. We sat around as a board at a lunch table and you know, basically got out a napkin and started writing down, well, how many cores do we think are in market, right? We came up with the number two. two. Two billion cores in market. And then our friends at Deloitte came out with this great study that says, you know what? Risk five is going to double. Oh, that's kind of like one of those 100% growth rates. Yeah, risk five is gonna double in 2022. So, you know, we'll see four billion this year. And they're gonna double again in 2023. So that brings us to eight. Well, I think Mark already stole the punchline <laughs> earlier today. We discovered that those numbers were wrong. That's kind of a good day for us. Those numbers are just too low. There's a lot more going on than two, four, eight. In fact, you know, our friends at Andes came out and said, well, actually, hold on. We did three, and then, you know, in March, they said, well, maybe there was 10, and so then we went back and we just said, well, okay. So if we add this, carry the one, uh, we did some more, we'll call it Callista math, because this is an imprecise science, right? It may, it may need some reverse engineering from Joanna and team. But, you know, we went back and we did a, an estimate. We said, all right, so we're going to go with 12, 12 billion. Now, let's see if Deloitte's right. Are we going to double that in 2022? Again in 2023? We are moving very quickly, and there's massive investment going on. Our friends from Intel, you know, they did something really bold. 
they have planted a billion dollar flag on risk five. Now I want to remind us that back in 2001, there was another company that planted a billion dollar flag, Linux, right? So prior to that, Linux was still like kind of a, you know, that was a rogue idea. That was the Rebel Alliance of, 20, of 2001. And IBM, a company that happened to have a hardware business, a software business, you know, they said, all right, we have our software business, but we are gonna go forward anyway and plant a billion dollar flag on Linux. And they committed to that. And folks were just like scratching their heads. Wow, that was a really dumb idea, right? Was it? You can have a both end kind of strategy here, folks. You can absolutely play in multiple games at one time, multiple architectures, multiple software strategies. That's called diversification. It's almost like investments 101, right? Do you put it all on one stock or do you try and diversify? It's the same thing when you look at a business, when you look at a technology. You know, all of the hyperscale friends I have, they are all working on multiple things back in their research departments to say, well, I don't know, we gotta like start looking farther into the future. And that's another thing that we get to do in hardware. We're not just looking at the next quarter, we're looking at the next decade, right? When we make those types of decisions, we can't just decide for today, we have to decide for the many tomorrows in front of us. So thank you, Intel. We're gonna hear from them all about the details of this strategy, or as much as they can share with us today. And we're gonna hear about their investment, uh, and we'll also hear more from you know, the broader community. I wanna say that um, you know, Risk V is an adventure for multinationals, as much as startups. You know, here you see uh, you know, the first double unicorn investment uh, funding round went to Sci-Fi. You know, a $2.5 billion valuation on their last round of funding. That's pretty impressive. And by the way, you know, there's been more than $1.6 billion in you know, just a, a, another back of the envelope investment look from public funding sources in Risk Five startups. I have a board member in Risk Five who is a venture capitalist. He's running a billion dollar fund in China. There are so many opportunities for companies big and small. And I am so excited to welcome in any of that innovation that we see coming from startups, bringing it together with the might of uh, the multinationals. Now let's see what we can do together. Right? Europe has been part of this for, since the beginning as well. And we're so impressed with the progress going on in the European Processor Initiative. We're involved in like four different calls and proposals from the European Union on funding around open hardware. Guys, like, let's think about it for a second. Everybody, all the countries and regions, they all wanna have a great technical economy, a great knowledge base, a great pool of talent, a great pool of companies to shore up their technical position in sort of that global race that's always going on with no finish line, by the way. And Europe is saying, you know what? We want to shore up our technical sovereignty, but we realize and recognize that we need to be a global citizen as well. That means give back. That means take an open approach as a foundational building block because without that open approach, you close the doors on your own opportunities. You would close the doors to development partners, supply chain, potential market opportunities, design flexibility. By taking an open approach, you participate in that global economy while strengthening your own local technical economy. And it becomes really strategic uh, and long-term because many communities, many companies, many countries are investing together. Just last week, we heard from India, huge declaration of their public roadmap. We've heard from China Academy of Sciences, right? They are a couple of our uh, premier members and they are a couple of our development partners. I gotta say, I gotta hand it to China. China Academy of Sciences has been one of our strongest development partners and contributors 
at scale that we've seen in RISC-V. It's very impressive. And we are looking to de cultivate development partners elsewhere in the world as well. So I'm going to give you a quick run through. I'm sure I'm running out of time already. <laughs> I have 10 minutes left, so we're going to keep going. So the data center. So Alibaba has been a leader in the data center in cultivating uh, risk five in SOCs uh, across their portfolio. And they have been uh, you know, a great contributor of bringing some of that to open source as well. When it comes to data center applications, we see a lot uh, transpiring in uh, additional differentiation. So AI and ML and other features that bring a competitive value to a portfolio more so than a rip and replace of the entire processor that they've been running on. That's a career move to tell the boss, hey, let's rip out that big investment you've already made in favor of this uh, new technology. One toe in the water at a time is generally the approach here. But you know, there are some like Alibaba who are very uh, strategically committed to risk five as we see here, along with several of these other examples. Again, this is looking to be very strong growth. There are a lot of uh, CPU opportunities in uh, the data center, and this is an area that we're seeing grow very rapidly. Telecom and communications. You know, yesterday uh, we heard from Andes, and, or maybe it was the day before, they're all kind of coming together now, uh, you know, about some of the adventures that they're having in mobile as well. And one of our members, MediaTek, is using uh, Risk v in, uh, in their cell phones. Right? This is not the primary processor yet, but you know, for very critical features like Bluetooth and network, those are kind of the two things I rely on my phone for quite a bit. <laughs> and so relying on RISC-V and continuing to grow and cultivate that has become very important. And you see additional things such as Alibaba's port to, uh, to uh, Android 10 and now 12, and we fully expect to see more traction going on in this space. In uh, automotive, very fast growing sector. This is, again is an area where we expect to see more than 10% of uh, uh, you know, moving on to risk five. And so this is something that, you know, one of the most encouraging things I see here is the level of partnerships that we have going on. Whether it's Andes or Renaissance or NSI Taxi, we see a lot of collaboration going on here in the supply chain to help support automotive uh, technology. I know it's important to me to think about, you know, where are we bringing some of those driver assist or autonomous safety features? And safety and security is paramount in automotive, as it is in uh, aerospace and in other applications. Consumer and IoT devices. So this is one of those uh, greenfield opportunities that, you know, I would uh, say didn't exist several years ago. We didn't have as many smart watches. We didn't have as many Bluetooth uh, enabled earbuds. These are things that are shipping at scale already. AI and ML, you know, it kind of seems to be the biggest buzzword these days. You've got to put AI in everything. In fact, we're seeing that also in uh, edge, in edge computing. So where you can bring more of that advanced functionality, more of that advanced compute to the edge, you are saving cycles on your entire uh, paradigm. So this is like, you know, this is like a book and it, there are many pages missing, right? There are many stories that couldn't fit on the page and I have font control issues, so I'm not gonna cram them all on there. But you can have these and I would welcome your stories too. I would welcome those as I, you know, go around and tell our story. Here's a picture of Joanna. This is the one that she gets sent a lot. Um, but, you know, this is something that's really important to us. Where are we taking high performance computing? How does that relate into some of these other industries? How do we, you know, more broadly commercialize some of the impacts that we can get from high performance computing across other types of workloads? And we're continuing to see this grow. This is a chart you saw from Mark. As you can see, we share charts a lot here. And this is, again, a indication of a chart that has been cultivating over time that didn't used to have quite as many logos on it. And it's so exciting to us to forge alliances with a couple dozen organizations today 
where we are collaborating on uh, regional or technical or industry specific types of initiatives. If there are organizations that you think we should collaborate with, please let us know. Just as much as I encourage you never to work in isolation, Risk Five International doesn't work in isolation either. We must continue to team with the many uh, different stakeholders on this chart. In fact, we're shoring up our software ecosystem, as you've heard. We're, by the way, we're hiring somebody to help us with that as well, uh, because there's so much work to do and so much opportunity. And this is an area where we fully expect to accelerate. It's not going to take us decades to get uh, up to parity or even surpass where many are today. We're doing this at you know, warp speed for, for our all practical purposes. Risk Five International has continued to see that growth. This curve continues to kind of grow. Uh, I think I have to add you know, a couple more months on there and we'll, we'll get it up to speed. Uh, but more than 2,700 members. So we grew like more than 130% last year. We grew more than 130% the year before that. That's the investment, dedication, and passion for Risk Five that is coming from this community. And that's something that we couldn't do without. As you can see from this chart, we have stakeholders in every corner of this community as well. And that's something that um, you know, kind of solidifies the value of Risk Five for all of us. If you are dependent on only one organization or a, a handful of companies for your strategic future, there's a lot more risk in that, in that scenario. But you can rest assured that the thousands that are involved on here, and by the way, it's more than 8,000 uh, engineers and developers amongst these members and more that are engaged directly in our community, and tens of thousands that are engaged beyond our community. Because you don't actually even have to be a member to use Risk V. But you do to help us drive our collective destiny. And if you, know, if you have companies that you're working with, organizations you're working with that are not members of Risk Five, I really encourage you to you know, have them give us a call. Join us in helping to cultivate the technical artifacts and, and other things that matter most to your business, to your success. These are six programs. I'm not gonna go through each one of them because I'll probably run out of time. But these six programs are designed for your success. We all have hobbies and things we like to do in our free time. Risk five should be part of your day job. We want to help your companies and your organizations be wildly successful. Because if you're not, then what are we here for? I mean, it's fun to get together and go on boat rides. Don't, I, no doubt that was a blast. Thank you, Christian, for organizing that. Um, but at the end of the day, we want you to be so successful that you are continuing to invest and continuing to grow your business and your interests. So these are the things that we do to help surround that. We're keen to developing technical things that matter to your solutions. We want to ensure that you have compatibility across the implementations that you're cultivating. We want to make sure that everything you do is visible. In fact, it is our commitment to be more visible about what our members are succeeding at than what we're doing as an organization. We are also committed to kind of building and growing talent out in the industry. One of the biggest things I'm hearing is, where can I find more uh, Risk Five engineers? So if you're an engineering student, the future is real bright. <laughs> and I can you know, encourage you to get your name out there. Make yourself known. Uh, but we're putting together online programs. You'll see Risk V certified engineer type, type programs, uh, as well as training partners and a collaboration across universities. Then we're also working very hard on um, you know, our advocacy and alliances. As I mentioned, we have a couple dozen uh, of our alliances already. You've met several of our ambassadors here. Uh, and we have more ambassadors around the world. And then lastly, uh, exchange, which is kind of the center of gravity for a lot of things Risk Five. If you haven't seen it, go online, check out the exchange program. We're listing all of our cores, hardware, software, other things that you can, developer boards, very popular. Uh, you know, we're, we're listing all of this up on exchange. 
And if you have things to add to that, let us know. So we have a really robust roadmap ahead of us. We've accomplished a lot and we have more to go. Uh, Mark can, uh, has taken us through a good overview of that. I encourage you to contribute and to engage others. If you want help advocating inside of your organization to make this your day job, uh, to you know, as, get your management chain to fully assign you to risk five, 100% of the time, 50% of the time, this should not be an after school activity, this should be your day job and we can help advocate with you internally or support you with materials for that. There, you know, as I mentioned yesterday, there's a European study that came out that said for every euro invested, you're gonna get four back in, in open source. That proves true time and again, and of course that equation looks a little different for every organization, but that's actually on the low end of what they were finding. Some are putting it as high as one to 10. So strong metrics behind that. This is the original crew, the original Risk Five crew. Uh, I encourage you to make the, your commitment, build your passion. It's pretty awesome when your passion matches your paycheck. It's something I get to do every day. And I think I've seen and felt that from many of you as well. You're so passionate about Risk Five. The level of energy at this conference has been astounding. And I can't wait to see what the next year brings us and to come back to Europe somewhere. Christian will tell us where we're going next year. Uh, we'll we'll uh, reveal that later. But thank you.